Welcome to this vivarium, that by the day is increasing in biomass and hopefully diversity as I persistently introduce new species into it. The already unimaginable complexity of this tank is something that we on this channel each update explore and discover together. But in this specific update it is time for us to do something more proactive, such as this. Yes, a digital food web. But this video is of course sponsored by Ant Keeping Depot and check the link in the description to check them out. Well, last video we saw this time lapse. As you can see, one of the scorpions in our ecosystem is eating a crushed worm. But then, all of a sudden, a slug steals her prey. However, one of the two salamanders intervenes and bites into this slug belly. Marty did escape, but the salamander looked really happy and I couldn't help but notice why. This was not a failed attempt. The salamander had successfully eaten a piece of Marty. We can all pray to Odin that he is healed in time for another bite from the salamanders. But yeah, nature, oh my god. But you know what? This got me thinking. In this ecosystem, who eats who and who eats what? It is clear already that all organisms in there are already interwebbed into a complicated intricate food web that only God knows how it actually looks like. But not proposing that we should act as God, but why shouldn't we try to make our own food web based on what we already know? There was no tool for me online to create a food web, so I had to get creative and I discovered this program named Jed. Their link is in the description. I will now show you how I use this free tool made to structure companies in order to make a food web out of my vivarium. Downloaded, you get a page like this. Then what I would like you to do is to download some photos of each species that you are planning to map in your food web. I won't go super into details because I am pretty sure the majority simply wants to see the final product of the web of the vivarium, but here is how I did one of them, step by step. Most importantly, you give the natural group a name or the species. Give it some colors as well, for example I give all my plants the green color. Here I am very general, but you could, if you want, divide all the plants into different species as I said, such as my Loris nobilis plant that I have in the vivarium. But instead we're going to add Scutigerella immaculata, commonly known as the garden symphony. Now, these guys feed primarily on plants' roots, which means that they will feed on the plants of the vivarium. That is why I'm giving it an arrow. Then it is pretty straightforward. You just keep on going until someone doesn't get eaten. Notice also how I change the color to darker red as I climb the predatory ladder. Or yeah, you get what I mean. The most challenging part though is to research on what eats what. But this you could also observe in your vivarium as well. But what about the worm? It doesn't eat anything living, but only dead leaves, so what kind of color should I give it? Not green, since it's not a plant. Well, I give all my decomposers the color purple. This is really helpful to give all your decomposers a collective categorization. You will see what I mean later on. The next oddity is the aphid. It arguably eats plants, so even though it is a parasitic relationship, I make an arrow as if it's eating the plant. Followingly, we have the harvest man, for example, that eats the aphids. Easy peasy, just an arrow again. However, what am I supposed to do with the Lastius umbratus ants? They don't eat the aphids, but feed on them. Their excretions and this gastronomical relationship is too important to go unnoticed on this graph. Well, what I like to do is to make a green arrow instead. This allows us to see that if the aphid disappears, the laceous ants will lose, but if the laceous ants disappears as well, the aphids also lose because of their symbiotic relationship. Same for the Myrmica rubra that does the same. I have some videos of this happening in the vivarium that I will show you in a future update. But yeah, doing this on and on, I ended up with this graph of my vivarium. The crazy thing is that 
it is far from finished. But look at that complexity. I bet that you have many questions, for example concerning the salamander and scorpion above that arguably are the apex predators. Which means that they eat basically everything, so I just can't make arrows from them to all the other animals. But moving on, I will use this graph for my future videos to explain how things evolve and occur within this ecosystem. That said, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video where we will be introducing this huge Myrmica rubra colony inside and, of course, so much more.